Hello everybody, welcome to the Season 2 Finals of Blood Bowl 3. We have the first round match between Eliod and Diamed. Eliod is Manager 1 in the blue. Diamed is Manager 2 in the red. So this is the first round. Nobody knows what happens in this game. This is a pretty tough draw for Eliod, right? Um, the NAS stats say that, that Underworld beat Orcs pretty easily, but I don't think it's uh, it's actually that one-sided. I think it's I think it's pretty close. I think you know Orcs are really tough. Uh, they've got a mighty blow under tackle, bunch of guard. I, don't, I think they're no slouches in the matchup. Maybe it's you know tilted by people who are bad. Um, <laughs> Naf, obviously, most players who play tabletop aren't very good. It's the same same in like ta uh, same in tabletop as Blood Bowl three, of course. But I think the average level in tabletop is is lower still. Um, of course, Elliot gave plus AV to the gut runner on the off chance he ever gets knocked over. Maybe he could have given it the troll, right? The troll's going to be in the midst of it, maybe getting fouled. Like, you know, you, you pretty much can't foul him if he's 11 plus, even with all the assists. So he could have maybe he's given it to the troll. But, I mean, everybody on earth would give it to the gut runner, I think. Mr. Throw with the ball. Big, big, uh, big gap, right? It, it, you could think about trying to cut it here as Elliot. You could think about trying to come through. But he just backs off his gutter. And uh, I guess he's just going to try and chip with Mighty Blow Blitz every turn. And protect everybody else. As he does chip. Incredible removal there. Goes for the guard, Biggin. And Apple works. Huge, huge apple there. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's going to be the the strat from Elliot then. The fact that he's already run away this gutter, he's he's not going to fight these. Uh, he's not going to fight these orcs if he can help it. Just try and blitz one. And you know, I guess he'll still screen like a little bit, right? But just not, not care too much about screening and only dodging him away because he's already standing. I think you'd have left him down if he was already down. So yeah, he might he might do a bit of lying down. Yeah, the, the, there was no inducements, and in so the way the money worked out, um, most people had four re rolls and a rat ogre. But Eliod gave up the uh, rat ogre down to a troll. And I think he prefers the troll anyway for like normal play. The thing is, for the one turn, the rat ogre is better. So. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, like the Rat Ogre is, is better for one turn per game than the Troll. But that one turn that it's better can decide the entire match. So it's an interesting decision to make. As an underworld coach. So he's going to pick off this guy at the side. Can't uh, actually protect his Mighty Blow guy after this. And then he's... Dodging his snots. <laughs> I wonder. I was, thought he might have double dodged there just to get him further over. But uh, I, I guess because he's going so deep, he can he can go the long way around and just go deeper. That makes sense. Clever Eliod. Do you know what? I wouldn't have minded. I wouldn't have minded the the goblin coming out there. Uh, rare opportunity to make the just a single dodge to get free, and then you know he could have come up here. And he would have helped protect the mighty blow a bit. And he could have, you know, maybe he's done something to, uh, you know, even pretend that he's going to go for the ball at all. <laughs> Attention seeking. Hmm. So now he makes it so it's a double dodge to get out of the, the goblin. Interesting. Goes up a little Mr. Throw. It's so funny. <laughs> Mr. Throw, one of the worst ball carriers. Well, the worst ball carrier, probably. Facing down the best. <laughs> oh, but now he's moving him. He obviously wants to protect the gutter. That's. You know, maybe he shouldn't have fielded it. There's a strong, strong argument for just not fielding the gutter on defense here. Very strong argument. Just, just as a 4 plus activation. Didn't want to risk the uh, goblin. Wow, all the dice rolls from Eliod, and then the guys who are lying down leave them lying down. He's going to get a blitz with Mighty Blow here. 
not getting a follow-up hit, which is, you know, m maybe he wanted that guard big and free. But I feel like running around and getting a follow-up hit would have been better. But, but that's because he's using using it to pile in. Fair enough. Still could have got an extra. I could have got a block follow-up hit. I don't know. Oh, I guess he was hoping to. He was hoping to strand the troll away from the goblin, right? That's what. That's why he blitzed that angle. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, of course, Invictus. That's why he did. But you know, like. <sighs> It's fielding it only for a blitz seems a bit rubbish, especially as you can't use dodge or, you know, GFI on the blitz. So I think not fielding it at all on defense versus orcs was a very valid choice. Because, you know, the, the plan is almost certainly to lie down and wait for the half to be over, so... Having to protect your best player while while doing that is uh, not ideal, is it? So, because now this affects like all your turn ordering and everything as well, because you know you have to ensure that the gut runner is safe more than anything else. It's interesting is you can almost do something with a ball here. Almost. I mean he could, right? He could have just gone for a 4-3. 4-3-2 to 1D. But yeah, I mean that made the most sense bringing the snotling so he can hit with mighty blow. Diamed. Diamed was top of ladder for most of the season, so with Orcs. So he's you know he's he's got the recent practice with them, which is helpful, isn't it? Even though you know like Blood Bowl's Blood Bowl and and you know we've all played thousands of games, so it's not like we're gonna learn anything in the last few games, but you know, having your eye in matters, doesn't it? Like being on form and stuff, it does actually matter. When I won when I won my first major on Fumble, it was because I'd been playing loads and I was like actually playing pretty well. I think it does matter. These are just two plus dodges, right, to run away. In fact you could run through the you could run through the tackle or like uphill and yeah, go near the ball. Yeah, I don't hate this. So now he's may possibly pressuring the ball. I would have uphill blitz the guard big in there, just you know. Your knockdown is so much better, and your push is just the same. And, but maybe, honestly, maybe Elio could have stood these guys up and tried to, uh, you know, roll some threes, and maybe try to get something here in the way of the ball. I wouldn't have hated it. Like, you know, just tag people or whatever. It's interesting, because these, these five were completely out of it. So I wonder if Elio should have, like, you know, tagged, tagged two players with snotlings. Or, or, you know, try to dodge through with snotlings. Try to stand up, throw a goblin. You know, there's some things you could have done to try and get a bit of pressure on here. Oh, here we go. We've got the 4 plus dodge to hit the gutter. Standard player, I, apparently. And Kazazim. him. Oh, my goodness. Well, instant apple there. Works. Flip me. That's what you get. That's what you get for uh, fielding your underworld on defense when you're going to lie down. And not what you get, but it's the risky run. It's the risky run for having potentially a stronger defense. Is that where, when you do have to lie down like this, you you know it's a, a panic station to protect your cutter. Three cars in the first half, but it's not affecting the second half, is it? So as far as things go, this is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Elliot calling his team Pogler. <laughs> I, guess, well, I don't know if this was like, you know, some kind of Fimea thing so that Pogler can be in the playoffs. But uh, there you go.
Man, I wish I'd chosen Underworld. <laughs> it's funny because, like, while it's like, it's it, honestly, it's it's amazing being on, being on the official cast. Like, it's so cool. So happy to be on that. Uh, I would have still liked to have, you know, won the tournament as well. <laughs> Officious ref. Uh, let's have a look. wasn't set off so wow going for the pa go for the catch in two two tackle zones I mean it must have been correct because Elliot's done it the pass does get a bit more difficult now doesn't it um, right I've, I've paused it here so <laughs> I don't know why Okay, then it's just it's now it's taken all that time to pause it. I'd press pause. What happened with the officious ref? A stunned, a stunned redden. Only the red one stunned. Sometimes, like it happens, and you know you see the stunned guy, and you think, oh, it's just my opponent, and then three turns later, uh, uh, whoops a daisy, it's uh, sent off an orc. So you know, best to check there. <laughs> Yeah, for, I mean that, that's what that's what Andy did, wasn't it? So you know, it's uh, it, it, I, none of her. The funny thing was before it started. Uh, thank you, Jaco, Jaco, Chocobo. Why can't I say Jacob? Chocobo. Why can't I say Ch? Chocobo Lord. Right. I don't know why I was saying Chiz as Jiz, but I did. Um, yeah, like it. It would be incredible, wouldn't it? Like to to win and play, but I mean hard, right? That's why we we wrote off. Uh, when I say we, Art and I wrote off the possibility of Davo being a commentator because we just thought, well, you know, you wouldn't have somebody playing commentating. But, you know, he, he tried it and uh, there you go. It, uh, it, it It's worked out pretty well for him. And why did Elliot pick the troll over the Rat Ogre? Because the troll is better for 15 turns, but for one turn, the Rat Ogre is better. Check this out, guys. Thank you very much. It's going to be amazing. So Elliot puts in all these dodges to fill all of these to make the first block be able to be a pow, which is very good because it's really hard to roll a push. And as you can see, he did not roll a push. Elliot using Underworld perfectly there. So yeah, so I got a bit... I was trying to pause it to see the result of this. But yeah, so what he did was dodges in the, the snotlings, makes this blitz. He can accept the pow because whatever happens, he changed this other guy in. This was, you know, it looks like a good setup for uh, Diomed, 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 but it's actually, you know, it's it's just not, it's tight. It's too easy to dodge these snotlings in and, you know, almost automatic to get the pushes forward. I mean, if you're as good at one-turning as Elliot is, which nobody in this tournament is. <laughs> They've made that abundantly clear already. <laughs> So he rolled a both down there, has to put in a re-roll. He's still got one left. And he can't hit the uh, last guard bigger. Too strong. And he makes the dodges in the GFI. And he's in. So there you go. Another great one turn by Elliot. So we've played single player Blood Bowl so far. Now all we have to do is dacker this out. You know, stall as long as possible. Hopefully till turn 8. And then he'll win 2-1, classic. Z almost zero interaction from the opponent. Perfection. Yeah, also by dropping... If if, he, if you have a Rattle, you have like a lot of points left. You have about 50k left or something that you don't use. So so by... Uh, maybe it's 40. 40 or 50 left that you don't use. So by swapping the Rattle for a Troll, he got to, um, he got to get an extra reroll, which is pretty good. I mean, I would have gone the Rat Ogre, person. personally, I would have gone the Rat Ogre, because I think it's it's so good for the one turn, but honestly, Elliot's better at one turning than me, so it makes sense if, you, if you've got the skills to pay the bills, then, um, you know, the fact that the Rat Ogre is only better for that one turn, you know, maybe you don't have it, and just take the troll that's better for 16 turns. Well, 15, sorry. 15 turns, the the troll, the troll is better. And it's even quite good on the one turn, because it's got guard, isn't it? It does seem fairly high, yeah, especially with this, because uh, he's got the extra arms, right? So the, the biggest single point of failure is the 3 plus pickup. Uh, that, that caps you at 89%, right? Even if everything else was, was perfect. 
whereas this, you know, it's only a 3% fail instead of an 11% fail. So, you know, Elliot's really gone for maximum one turnage. They're still used. Ah, that was just that was just a thing. That was just a thing. Somebody posted it in Devil's Discord, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, oh, the, 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 you can't. It's hard to ballpark because like there's so many things that can go wrong, right? I guess you can ballpark an optimal one where you don't have to GFI with the thrower. You have to pick it up. You have to pass it into like one tackle zone or something. You you could work it out like roughly, but. Um, you know, yeah, optimal, optimal, not optimal, not just optimal player, but kind of like optimal conditions. Hello, Diamed, no spoilers, please. Um, even though probably a lot of people have seen this and a lot of people know the result, but, um, you know, going back, going back in time for the YouTube people. <laughs> yeah, play three turns of Blood Bowl. I mean, what could be better than playing less turns of Blood Bowl? Absolutely glorious. Oh, yeah, throw on the troll, yeah, yeah. Nice, glorious. nice no, lack of armor there in. for Elliot to get Until it. Until I'm victorious, the armor and yeah. I will defend. I will defend. He instantly goes 16 for 16 months. Woo. Woo! Thank you very much. Be a GA9 staying fantastic for 16 glorious months. And, uh, yeah, I wonder about putting anybody on there was a good idea. Never mind the thrower. Just let him let him stand up and walk around a bit. He shouldn't be too relevant. And then if you want, stick a lineman on him. Um, sticking a big one on him there is a bit uh, a bit wild. That's the stun. Thank you very much, Beard. And it was the armor that made the difference. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't have given him the blitz. He's not going to blitz with the other people, so. I don't think there was any need to take any hit there, right? Not not just the thrower. There was just literally no need for anybody to get hit. And now he's tagging out. Yeah, I mean... It, all right, I, I know it's like the creatures in the Final Fantasy series, but I've never played Final Fantasy, and I've only seen it written down. <laughs> I've literally only seen it written down. I, uh, I am not a weeb. <laughs> I've got... <laughs> I've got no desire <laughs> to uh, ever play or watch Final Fantasy whatsoever. Yeah, I know lots of people do, and that's fine. That's fine for them. But, uh... Yep. I mean, it's just one turn, right? I don't think in moving one turn last turn was alright. Was it was okay, right? Diamond. He was down, wasn't he? He had to stand up to Blitz. Oh, badly hurt. So what is it, Chocobo? Not Chocobo. I've always said Chocobo, but it's Chocobo. <laughs> or ch Choco, Chocobo? Chocobo? Cho I don't fucking know. Right, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. Chocobo. Chocobo. I, I don't care. I, I would rather remain ignorant and see it differently every single time. Right, there's another KO. Getting quite a lot of casualties here. Five cars and a stun. A stun, five cars and a KO. So, you know, pretty lucky from uh, Diomed here, right? He's He's got the tackle and the mighty blow, but, like, the random dudes are making cars as well. And that early fail means that he gets a bunch of hits. So, you know, not not mega lucky, but certainly lucky to make so many cars. Elliot has to put in a reroll there. He's just he's just bezzing down the sideline. Blitz is here. I, I believe this Snotling can go and tag this guy. And he tags him, yeah. Wait, in fact, he didn't even need to be tagged, did he? Oh dear me. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he didn't need to be tagged, because he can only assist, and it's already 2D anyway, so I don't like that from Elliot. Just randomly gets him surfed for no reason. Do not like that. Because he couldn't have caught him next turn either, you're just going to score next turn, right? If you can. 
I guess that's what he was thinking. But even if he goes A, then you just run away and he can't he can't hit you again. Uh, it seems weird. He got, that's weird. I don't know why. Cause like he's auto surf. I guess it's so you one on one and he hasn't got block, so you can maybe get another turn of stall out of it. I guess that's what he's thinking. Maybe he would have gone back. Oh yeah, he would have gone back central, right? And then so now Elliot could go touch him side to side. So he was thinking maybe get an extra turn of stall out of it. That's got to be it. I mean, he had to think he was going to get an extra turn of stall out of it. I just couldn't work out how he thought he was going to get another stall out of it. And he does, yeah, he just stands there, okay. Yeah, because he's completely out of range. But the other one would have only got here anyway, so he'd have still been completely out of range of the Blitzer as well. But maybe if he'd gone over the side, I guess he didn't want to give the 4 plus off. Yeah. Yeah, this big un was out of range. Yeah, the big un should have GFL'd for sure, yeah. 100%. Probably two, right? Probably two to be right on the middle. Probably two to be right in the middle. So now the, the, the lineman takes that position. We would have seen hordes of undead. Absolutely hordes of undead. Because, because people... You know, a mold that well versed in undead. Like we should have seen more underworld, but people didn't take them because they weren't very good with them. Whereas everyone's good with undead. So he could have gone right in the corner, right? So you had to do, you had to do, what you had to do two, because he can he can only touch here, right? He, he could have, that was for max move, right? One, two, three, four. Five GFI. Oh, was it? No, no, because he couldn't hit. So he was here. If he was here, one, two, three, four, five, double GFI. So it, it had to be two GFIs. Unless did you not go full move? He had he had to be in the middle line to go seven and hit right in the corner. And then he gets in. They go 2-1 with three turns left. Loads and loads of removals. This one may be pivotal. Was did not need to happen. It did not need to happen from Elio's point of view. He gave up that server. I don't think taking out the Blitzer really did anything for him. But, you know, maybe he thought it would. I mean, he had to think it did, so... And, I mean, and maybe it did, right? Because at the end of the day, that, that big one was there, and he didn't... You know, if that had been a blitzer there, he would have he would have done. But I don't think it did make a. I don't think it did make a difference. So, even like double GFI in both turns, so he could have had an extra player here. But how many players has he got? Three, six, eight players. <laughs> uh, this is very lucky for Diamond then. Six Kaz and two KOs. That is very lucky. Uh, honestly, that's re that, that's that's really lucky. Um, obviously, Elliot got super lucky with the. Kaz on the big one, but that was Apoed. Uh, didn't really notice it, but that's one of the <laughs> one of the advantages that this build has without the troll that they get the Apo to save that guy, and that's a touchback, or is it a catch? Ball is back in the base. So I guess that's a touchback rather than an incredibly lucky bounce. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's pretty amazing getting this guy. I mean, that's not the same as six cars, is it? But <laughs> and I, I like I know that they're I know that they're underworld, and you expect to make some cars against them. But there's only one mighty blow, you know. There's not there's no troll. There's like there's been quite I think there's been quite a few like kind of failed dodges by Elio that's led to more hits. So you know it's not it's not been. It's not just like you know made six blocks and made six cars and stuff, but. Still, we we've all seen games where <laughs> we've all seen games where people get to hit a, a hit a gutter runner like you know six times with mighty blow and gang foul him a few times and not do anything to him. So to have removed quite so many is is pretty lucky still.
Like, normally Elliot's protecting his snots, right? But he just hasn't been able to because he's been failing things like that. <laughs> so now with two turns left, he's got to get moving with the ball. Doesn't take the risk of uh, blitzing the snotling, even with three dice with block and tackle. And puts this guy here so that no matter where this, he sidesteps to, it's all it's all right. Whoop. GFI for the penis cage. Always a good idea. <laughs> Ooh, only KO'd. Huge. Really good because you've got the guard in front and then like the, the kind of cage behind yeah. and the screen. Very, very safe. You could argue that GFI wasn't even needed, to be honest. Um, but... You know, maybe, maybe don't, maybe, maybe, so maybe slightly better ordering here was to have done the blitz on the gutter, see what happens, and then knowing that, you know, the gutter's KO'd, then just move the big and there and don't even GFI or something like, because you don't want to have to re-roll that. I know three re-rolls, but very, very picky that, isn't it? Very picky, but interesting, somewhat interesting. <laughs> So everybody's down, loads of people are out. Is it a GFI? It is, yeah, it didn't move on the first turn, did he? Uh, did he just block on the first turn, that guy, and then got a bolt down? Mm. Well, Elliot's won the toss, that's okay, so it's not over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players. Eight players to Daka. The uh, gutter runner does come out. The extra arms guy stays out. So I think it was a mistake to get him served. Honestly, I do think it was a mistake. I mean, he gave up the surf, right? But I think still think it was a bad decision to make like, the mistake that he made to do that on purpose. And of course, one of the players is the troll who just stands there like an idiot. All right, De Boomer, all right. Flip me. Flip me, guys. Biggins being moved five is ridiculous, isn't it, by the way? Gut tries to smash the mighty blow, yeah. Honestly, maybe Elio should have tried, like, harder. I don't know if it was Diamond protecting his mighty blow very well. And... Or, or if it was, you know, Elliot not targeting it well enough. But, I, you know, I've, it does feel like Elliot should have targeted it more, right? Uh, whatever. Whatever you want to say. Uh, like, it's hard to say, though, because obviously he went for the guard big and didn't he at first, and, and, and Kaz that. Which was, like, really good. Like, your 75% knockdown versus 55. But obviously the, the Mighty Blow guy, three dicing every turn with Mighty Blow, is pretty horrendous. Try harder, yeah. Yeah, tell him that, Fluffy Burrito. <laughs> I mean, this is a hard game taking so many removals. I mean, they've got 16 players, so they can, they you know, they can take five removals and they'd still be, a, you know, more or less full strength, but... We, we saw the, uh, one, you know, one of the Plains games, and Elliot was just masterful at protecting his uh, snotlings, and, you know, Diamond saying here he's three-dicing a... Stopping every turn with mighty blow, so you know. Again, I wonder if that's Elliot's bad play to uh, to you know expose the snotlings every turn, or if it was good play to you know set them up. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Interesting. Super interesting. <laughs> wow, Elliot. No, because who am I to say? Who am I to say? You know, if it's good or bad. I'm not as good as, as either of these guys. Or I'd have been playing it, wouldn't I? I think you I think you made a lot of failed a lot of early dodges which which left them exposed. That's what I think. So I think I think what's happened has the like the early dodge fails have led to taking more hits. Um and that's why there's been more attrition than normal. But even then, even getting the more hits doesn't necessarily translate to more attrition, does it? 
So there, I think there's there's been bad luck on the dodges, which has led to bad luck on the removals. But um, you know who's to say if it's uh, if it's good or bad. Safe's not. Well, I mean, not now. <laughs> not now. Um, yeah, honestly, maybe, maybe just do the one turn. I wonder how easy the one turn was. The problem is now, what are we on? We're t on turn 19. Okay, okay. Yeah, the two turn isn't trivial. Right, we're on turn 19 for Diamed. So he did set up somewhat one turn in defense. He's got the two snotlings to run back and fill. I wonder if the player was was uh was trying for the one turn even. Oh, but then have lost this, lost that thrower from that surf. Yeah, without without the thrower, it gets a lot worse. Yeah, so I mean, being being far behind, you know, makes really the Daka. Yeah, it's a good point actually. Just you know, try and make the orc score two. Is a pretty. Uh, is a pretty, you know. Normally, I'd dacker to try, you know, try and win the game. But yeah, maybe, maybe just think. Look, I can't dacker. If you think you can't dacker, then trying to score early is is just better, right? If you if you think that the dacker will fail, or you know, or you might not think it might fail. You might think that the dacker's got a ten percent chance of working, and and the two turn has got a. You know, an eleven percent or a nine percent, but you've just got to literally, you know, use your uh, use your dio brain and allocate random percentages to it, <laughs> like, because you can't. You've obviously got absolutely zero idea of any of the actual percentages involved. Um, but this is actually quite good that he's he's able to like make some kind of a play here, right? There were there were three players and there was a there was a one, there was a two D blitz that was like. Maybe uh, maybe Diamond could have done something better than uh, allowing this from Eliod. But well, he's not going that way. He could have gone that way, couldn't he? He could have gone one, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI. I don't not hitting the not hitting the gutter. Then I wouldn't have hated just trying to hit the gutter. You know, like do all the safe moves first and then try and hit the gutter. No, he's just gonna surf the so he's gonna surf the goblin though. I did. For somehow, for some reason, I didn't realise that was a goblin on the uh in the end zone, so yes, obviously just surf the goblin. Is uh, way more likely to be impactful. Yeah, yeah, I think the the goblin should have been one up. I don't really know why. Oh, was he because he would have been double base, so he'd have had to like GFI up to here, so Oh but look, we've got a little run through. We've got a potato. <laughs> Uphill works, kind of. Double piles have been better, but just a dodge. And then maybe just keep him. No, another dodge. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of dodges here. Makes the first two. <laughs> oh my god, the sideline cage. <laughs> so first move, this tackler runs back, I think. <laughs> Get that tackler back. Yeah, and on that side, because, you know, he can't switch it to the other side completely. That was an incredible turn to even have a chance of this. Not much of a chance, admittedly, but there's a chance. He has to put in another player to make this harder, right? Yeah, otherwise it would, you know, have been a one-day run, so... 
That'll put something in you. Uphills. Gets the knockdown. Oh. So he was blitzing, I, I take it. Somewhere. He was going to blitz somewhere and do something, but it fails and the gutter's surfed. And two turns left. Well, three, including this one. Uh, doesn't follow. Hello? Doesn't follow. There's no, there's no players left. <laughs> Just follow and surf him. <laughs> it's the pickup. Pushes the uh, troll away. Yeah, so six plus. Five plus uh, four, six, five, two, two. It would only be one GA five if he vomited on him as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so sadly on the replays we don't see the last turn, but obviously he walks it in. Um, so there you go. That's oh, you've got to you've got to exit rather than continue. The continue just does nothing. I, I guess it keeps you in the replays. Rather than like, uh, so you could go back and look at things if you want. So yeah, Ooh, could could look at the statistics here. The most useless, the more the, you know, not the most useless, pretty useless uh, kind of statistics in here because it doesn't show you the actual dice rolls. But I mean, they were they were pretty decent, right? They were like what five out of five out of six? No, <laughs> nine out of they were like God, so nine out of eleven. Which that's is that bad? I think that's bad, isn't it? Because it, loads of these are one in thirty-six fails. It felt like what it what it felt like to me is that the early fails from El, the early fails from Elliot's dodging led to taking more hits, led to not being able to protect the snotlings. And led to the more cars, and then the more cars led to not being able to protect the snotlings. And it, you know, basically the the early removals snowballed, um, and I do think that that happened. But having said that, plenty of other people could have also made those removals and not won, right? And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good point, Diamond. Actually, uh, but even on fumble, even on fumble, it's like uh, forty-two. 42% for Orcs versus um, Underworld, which seems crazy, and that's on Fumble that, you know, ban all of the big stars and match very closely on, on uh, TV. So, like, yeah, that that seems crazy to me, because, yeah, I thought that was a tough match. Like, I picked Andy to beat uh, Artemis, you know, in the first round. Like, I didn't think this was easy for Elliot at all, and, yeah, movement five on the big ones is incredible, yeah, for sure. The early basing, nah... Well, there you go. Yeah, tried to lie down. Tried to, tried to run away with with a gutter and lie down with everybody else. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, that's good. Thank God we had Elliot and Diamed in the chat <laughs> who actually knew what was happening because. This is, again, this is why I didn't want to play Underworld, right? I just, you know, it's not the same, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's just not the same. Um, if you're not an expert, you don't know the keys to victory. And, you know, obviously, we're all good at Blood Bowl. You know, let's not put myself down too much. But <laughs> if you've played more, you know, with and against um, Underworld, I think it does make a big def difference, right? So, um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Andy not pressuring the Daka. Uh, well, that's let, let's not get into that because that might not be on YouTube before this one. Uh, but yeah, you should always pressure the Daka. Yeah, for sure, should always protect. Should always pressure the Daka. And uh, right, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, so yeah, sorry. Congratulations, Diamond, who advances to round two of the winners bracket. Commiserations to Elliot, but he gets a second chance in the losers bracket. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.